Welcome to Obermatt. This is the place where we discuss the stocks that we invest ourselves. I'm here with Candice Chang. Hello, Herman. And my name is Herman Stern. I'm uh, the CEO and uh, developer of the Obermatt method. Candice, you invest in the United States and you thought about a couple of new things that you want to do. Yes. So uh, I was uh, really interested in looking at industries that would benefit uh, the U.S. economy in the longer term. So I was focusing on maybe those industries where the U.S. has been dependent on um, foreign resources or foreign companies, uh, which maybe they want to start to repatriate. Uh, so one of the industries that I was interested in looking at was semiconductors, because obviously a lot of semiconductors uh, and the technology around the semiconductor producers are coming from Asia. Uh, largely Taiwan, and, and I wanted to see which American companies were active in this industry uh, in the idea that um, as, as countries, uh, uh, particularly in the U.S., uh, start to look for more domestic production, I thought that these could be companies that could be uh, benefiting um, over the longer term. So why do you think that uh, Americans will... Um I look more for domestic products. I mean, you are well, American, so you, you can, yes. you're probably the right person to ask. Yeah, I, you know, I guess with um, the, as we've seen with sort of global supply chains and how fragile they are, um, I thought that one of the outcomes could be that companies look to source and produce more within their own borders. Uh, and so that's why I looked at, uh, actually I started looking at some of the goods that the U.S. imports the most, uh, and these were things like uh, the cars and also a lot of different computer equipment, uh, including semiconductors. Oh really? That's what they import the most? Cars and semiconductors and computers? Cars and uh, computer, cars and technical equipment, including you know, largely computers. Okay, very yeah. good. Okay, interesting. Uh, so that's something that could actually move back to the States because the States want to uh, have supplier security in terms of their computers and chips, of course, and maybe even the cars. Yes, okay. yes. I think that uh, there's been talk for, for some time now about the you know, global supply chains and how dependent we are on goods and products coming from abroad. Uh, and now after this uh, um, large boat was stuck in the Suez Canal, I think that was, uh, again, a reminder of how how delicate some of these supply chains are. Yeah, the stock um, ship, I think there was a wake-up call for a lot of people. Yes, so I started to look at, uh, you know, like I said, the top products that are imported. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that these are by dollar value, so, you know, uh, but there are different ways to look at the numbers, but ultimately I thought that this was an interesting area to look at. Uh, so I went to the Obermatt stock, stock filter um, and I searched for companies in the U.S. in uh, the semiconductor business or also suppliers to the semiconductor uh, producers um, and looked at the and got a short list of companies that were interesting uh, for me to look at and I looked at, um, you know, that, that had very strong Obermont ranks. So that's where I started. Uh, I had a short list of about six or seven companies. Uh, I then researched what they do, uh, what... Uh, sort of their stock price development had been, what other ratings agencies were giving them as um, uh, stock ratings, uh, and then narrowed down to two companies. So uh, within the field, I narrowed down to a company called Lamb Research uh, and one called Excellus. Okay, let's have a look at that. Yeah, so if I look at uh, Lamb Research, so it uh, has a value rank of 63, a growth rank of 67. Um, what interested me was the combined rank uh, at 83. Uh, and compared with uh, um, applied materials, they, they had a combined rank, I believe, of 79 or close to 79. Um, but I like this one because there's green everywhere. <laughs> Uh, it's extra That's large, really so I think it's uh, it, it's well positioned. It's been um, it's been around for for a long time, so I think it is one of the major players. Um, without being extra extra large, uh, not that that's necessarily such a bad thing, um, but uh, but but I but I I chose Lab Research. Um, I think largely because of the ranks. Mm -hmm. Do you know what, what products they have? Do you, should we look at them? 
I, I can, sh so I did look at the website, um, though I must admit that uh, it's all a bit technical. I didn't get, didn't dig into the details of what they do too much, um, other than I know that they supply, uh, they support the production of semiconductors. So they're creating the equipment to produce semiconductors. They're, they're producing the materials that are needed um, to, in the process of okay. creating semiconductors. And that should actually be in the band now. If they want to produce more semiconductors in the United States, then they need the tools, tools to do so. Right, right. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and, you know, with the uh, value rank that is also um, in the 60s, at 63, uh, it felt like this was still an area that was maybe a little bit under hiked. Can I look where the value rank comes from? Yes, of course. So let's go to land research to the Olomo Franks and the value metrics. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, it comes from it comes from price versus revenue is average, but they make a lot of profits. So mm -hmm. a lot of value comes from the profits, and they pay a, a high dividend. So this looks like um, an operation that uh, generates a lot of cash right now. Mm -hmm. um, this is a good sign. It's an established technology. And if the demand increases, you know, you could actually see more growth. At the moment, the growth is average, but you know, profit growth is above average. So that's a good sign because top line growth, revenue growth could, could increase, you know, in the future. And then uh, uh, the price becomes more attractive. What you see here also is uh, price versus capital is quite low. Yes. And uh, that's actually, not a big surprise. If a lot of your capital is intellectual property, it doesn't show up on the balance sheet. Okay. So uh, if, you, if you know that they have a lot of intellectual capital uh, and also much machinery, I mean, they're selling machinery, but that's not on their balance sheet, right. that's their revenue, uh, then basically um, it, it's, it's possible that uh, market to book uh, ratio, the, you know, price, uh, stock price to capital ratio is so low. Mm -hmm. or, you know, or so high actually with a low resulting value rank then. So this could actually be even better value than what, what, what suggested because the value okay. rank takes everything into account. Okay, well that's good to know because uh, I did look at their ranks uh, uh, over the past few years. Uh, I know the past doesn't predict the future, but it did, uh, because of all of the green, it did feel like a fairly solid company, um, but the red that appeared here within the detailed value metrics was a little bit of a concern. So it's good to hear that that doesn't necessarily have to be such a concern in this case. Yeah. Also, you know, a red in the price to uh, price to profit ratio, uh, you know, price earning ratio, is not necessarily always a big problem because, you know, it could be a, a seasonal fluctuation or it could be a one-off, you know, hit on, on profits that may go away again. Yeah. So I look more at revenues, I look look at capital, but in that case now where we have a lot of intellectual property, uh, it's, it's different. Okay. That's an interesting choice. So land was your first stock? Yes. Anything to add for that stock? Um, I mean, I did look at their sustainability uh, record. Uh, I think in some of the other videos we've talked about sustainability and it did look like they had some uh, sustainable activities that they mentioned on their website. So there was quite a lot on their site about sustainability um, I, I wasn't able to dig so deep to see how much they really are putting behind it and if it's just a nice story that they have on their site or not. Um, but at least they did have it there, so they right. recognize some of the importance of, of that topic. Um, you were asking me which companies I had eliminated, and one was called Cyber Optics. And this was a company that was very small. And in looking at their stock price development over the last year, it was very volatile. So it was constantly going up and down, as is <laughs> the case in volatility. Um, and given its size as a very, in the extra small category, um, I thought that this was one that might be too volatile for, for my taste, uh, okay. particularly at this point in time. So I think a company that in this last year has been fluctuating so much was one that uh, didn't give me so much confidence moving forward. Okay, makes sense in order to balance off and not have just one player within that industry, I looked for a second stock to invest in. Um, again, another company that 
in, that supports the production of semiconductors. They also provide equipment and processes in order to uh, for the production um, of semiconductors. This one is a medium-sized company. So again, it was recommended to me when I went to the Obermott um, stock search and I used the filter uh, and it gave me a list of companies. So that you can see uh, here that I have uh, things like Rubicon Technology. This was one that had a very strong combined rank at 94, um, but it's an extra small company. Uh, and looking at their history, it was one that I decided to, uh, against um, simply because I, mean, I think I didn't want a company that was uh, so so small um, and okay. early on. Mm -hmm. um, the next one on the list was Excellus, uh, and I did look at more than just the top two on the list. Uh, but Excellus also came in very strong uh, with a combined rank of 90, uh, good safety uh, ranks of 84, um, also pretty good value at 64, uh, and also growth uh, at 64 as well. So this was the one that I chose. Uh, I did look at a few of the other companies on the list, uh, Xperi, also a medium-sized company like Excellus, uh, but they were quite volatile uh, over the last period. Uh, and uh, so I chose, uh, I decided to, uh, to invest in Excellus. Uh, when we look at their um, performance, uh, their, when we look at your ranks, really, um, you can see that in 2020, they were also quite strong, a similar rank to this year, even a stronger growth um, last year uh, than this year, this year, since we're still only, um, we've only finished the first quarter, uh, it's less data uh, that's feeding into those ranks, um, but uh, uh, well, maybe Herman, you mm -hmm. have some thoughts on some of the more details. Um, the value rank, obviously, uh, dividend yield is very, very low with the rank yeah, of one. Exactly. I think it doesn't get much lower than that. Um, but dividends there, isn't yeah. a top priority for me. So yeah. uh, there, there, I have a point. You know, the dividend yield. You know. Uh, sometimes a lot of people love dividends, you know, they love dividend companies. They think they're a little bit like bonds because they give you a rather interest on, on your investment. But I sometimes say, well, if a company pays a high dividend, it means it doesn't know what to do with the money. <laughs> and there are good examples of highly successful companies, especially in technology, that haven't paid dividends for decades. Right. Uh, so when I see a company that pays a low dividend, in this respect, probably zero dividend. That's why the rank is the lowest that is available. A one is the lowest rank. It possibly, it probably means they are investing the money in something where they think they are going to get more money out of it than paying out in cash. Yeah. So that needs a good sign. I, I think a good a low dividend yield could actually speak for a company, not necessarily speak against it. Okay, great. That's good to know. Um, I have to admit that. Uh, these companies, it are, it's very technical, so I was going more on my choice for the industry and uh, very heavily on the ranks. Um, the other thing that I did look at was some of the, their performance when it comes to sustainability. So I looked at what they had on their website when it, uh, around sustainability, corporate social responsibility, uh, and what they do and how seriously they take also the, their production and you know their emissions. Um, uh, in their overall practices. So I have to say that this was uh, now a company where I could tell you at a very high level what they do, um, mm -hmm. but I couldn't go into too much detail into the actual technology. Uh, one of the things that I did do is I did look at some of the ratings from some of the other uh, companies, um, other ratings agencies and uh, banks, uh, to see what they had to say uh, about Excel and many were uh, were favorable. Okay, okay. If you have, if you go by the you know overall ranks, you know, and if you decide to go for companies with a good value rank, you typically find companies that are underappreciated in the market. Market. So, in technology, this is actually quite an exception. Mm -hmm. So, if you have a company in the technology sector that is in the field where uh, the future is really important, you know, platforms, um, for instance. Uh, medicine, you know, um, then a high value rank is maybe not that a good sign. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have an infrastructure company, you know, these are now the two companies you discussed, Excel, uh, Excelsis, and the other one was LEM, LEM Research. LEM Research. They are more in the infrastructure business, so yeah. more in the in the 
traditional manufacturing of machines that they supply to the semiconductor industry. And there, I think it makes sense to go for companies that are not that expensive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's a good choice. I mean, for me, it was uh, a little bit of a, um, a question mark, I have to say, uh, because when companies are so strongly uh, recommended uh, as, as with a buy rating or as an outperform, then it does uh, lead me to believe that maybe they are over hyped or too mm -hmm. popular, Absolutely. right? Which, but here, this was a case of uh, a company that still had a very strong value rank uh, so at makes, 64. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, um, yeah, I guess sometimes, that works for me. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes the value rank is yeah. very low and the other ratings are very high, um, yeah. which tends to, which leads me to uh, move away from them actually. Yeah. Yeah. And in this respect, if you have recommendations by industry experts and at the same time a good value rank, then you have a really good reason to buy, mm -hmm. I think, because that means the prospects are good and the company is cheap. Mm -hmm.